Hello everyone! Here is a unique gift idea for someone who has an interest in growing plants and fish keeping. Combine the two together and you have a simple aquaponics system. The idea behind aquaponics is that the waste products from the fish fertilize the plants growing above the tank. And the plants help keep the water cleaner by absorbing the fish waste as nourishment. So it's a symbiotic relationship where both the fish and the plants benefit. I saw this water garden on Amazon and I was curious about it, so I asked the good people at Back to the Roots for a free sample kit to review. I made no promises about what I would say, just that if they would send me a free kit, I would do a video. So here it goes. The box itself has images of school age children, so it makes me think that it's being marketed towards kids. Which makes sense. This is a simple and uncomplicated way of keeping a fish and growing some plants at the same time. A while back I grew mushrooms using a kit from Back to the Roots. That was also a simple kit and it looked like it was marketed towards school age children as well. But there's a kit in all of us, right? Let's take a look at what comes in the box. There are not a lot of pieces to put together, which is really nice. Right on top is an instruction card and inside are clearly printed instructions for setting up the fish tank and setting up the garden. The tank and all its pieces all come out of the box as one, nicely wrapped together. It comes with a small trial size package of betta food, water conditioner, and a coupon for Aquion products. Next we have a bag of grow medium. These are clay pebbles that are used in hydroponics. The kit also comes with organic seeds to start growing right away. These are organic wheatgrass seeds and here are some organic radish seeds. Then there's a black roll of netting. We'll see where that goes in a bit. And of course a pump to get the water from the fish tank up into the growing area. There are three pieces to the pump. The pump itself, some flexible black tubing, and another bit of rigid white tubing with a plastic clip to hang on the side of the tank. We'll see where that goes also in a little bit. And as you can see, there are three growing trays with holes for the water to drain. Oh, and a $3 coupon off a Veil Tail Betta Fish, if I get it at Petco. More about that in a bit as well. Here are the three growing trays. You can see they fit together like a puzzle. This hole here is where you drop food into the tank to feed the fish. And this slot here is where the water recirculates and drops down back into the tank. And the three pieces go back together again only one way. As I said, like a puzzle. Now before using any of these pieces, I'm going to wash everything. I started with the clay pebbles, rinsing them off nicely, and then I washed the growing trays, the tank, and the pieces of the pump. Notice there's a little cut out notch on the back of the tank here. This is where you clip the white piece of tubing onto, but first you need to connect the black tubing to it, and then connect the black tubing to the pump. Now the pump and its tubing are ready to hang on the back of the tank. The pump itself has little suction cups to help it stick to the back of the tank. It's really simple to put together, even without instructions. Next, I filled the tank with water. I filled it with filtered water. I don't know if that's important or not, since the kit came with water conditioner, but that's what I did. Once the tank is filled with water, the drip tray will rest on top like this, and you can see the white tubing from the pump comes up here and will pump the fish water from the tank up into this drip tray. Then the water will flow back down into the fish tank through this slot. They recommend to fill the tank up to about an inch below the top tray, so that's what I did. Meanwhile, I prepared three small glass bowls for the seeds. I'm going to grow the radish seeds as microgreens in the two outer trays and the wheatgrass in the middle tray. The seed packet suggests soaking the seeds for 8 to 10 hours and also recommends 1 teaspoon per grow tray. So I measured out 1 teaspoon of the radish seeds for one of the glass bowls and another teaspoon for the other. And then in the middle I'm going to grow the wheatgrass. That also needs 1 teaspoon. Here you can see what the wheatgrass looks like. These are bigger seeds than the radish ones. I think I should have used 1 tablespoon rather than 1 teaspoon. But we'll see. 
Okay, it's noontime now, so I'm going to let these seeds soak for about eight hours, and we'll come back later tonight to plant these. The kit also comes with this packet of water conditioner and dechlorinator, but since I use filtered water, I wasn't sure if I should use the packet, so I didn't. I wasn't ready to put a fish in the tank yet anyway. The packet also contains beneficial bacteria, but I'm planning to add some water from my husband's fish tank, and that water definitely has all the nutrients and bacteria of a fish tank, so I set the packet aside. You can see the pump is working. It's pumping the water up through the white tubing. Now it's time to put the drip tray on top. The black piece of netting fits into this slot, so I push it in there, and it will help to filter out any debris from the plants above. And then I fit the tray in so that the pump's tubing fits in the hole, and you can see the water coming out and filling up the tray. Once the tray fills up with water, it will overflow into this slot and then back down into the fish tank. Here's a view from below. You can see the water dripping down into the tank. Now that the pump is set up and the water is circulating from the tank to the drip tray and back to the tank, it's time to set up the grow trays. Fitting them together is a bit of a puzzle, a little trial and error, and I finally got the pieces back together. And this is what it should look like. Once the three grow trays are sitting in the drip tray, you can see that the water comes up into the grow trays, so this will bottom water the plants, providing constant water to any plants growing in the trays. The hole here at the front is to drop food down to the fish below. The next step is to distribute the clay pebbles. Remember to wash them first, and then distribute the clay pebbles evenly between the three growing trays. Now it's time to plant the seeds. They've been soaking in water to give them a kickstart. I strained the water and distributed the seeds into the garden. These are the radish seeds. They're small and they're all clumped together because they were wet, so it's not as easy to distribute them evenly as when the seeds are dry. Next I have the wheatgrass seeds. I don't really like wheatgrass. I know people juice it up, but to me it tastes like, well, it tastes like grass. In any case, I distributed those seeds in the middle grow tray, and then in the last tray I distributed some more of the radish seeds. Now these I really like to eat as microgreens. They have a sharp spicy taste, almost like a radish, and they add a nice kick to salads, soup, sandwiches. I even put them in omelets to give it a nice flavor. Okay, now I'm done. All three grow trays have been planted. Now it's exactly 24 hours later, and you can see the seeds are all starting to sprout. The tray on the right I left alone after I distributed the radish seeds, and the middle tray I also left alone after planting the wheatgrass, but notice how they all seem clumped together. So for the tray on the left, which has the radish seeds, I decided to stir the seeds around to distribute them better, and this caused many of them to fall between the cracks of the clay pebbles, so it doesn't look like there's many seeds there, but they're there. They're just down between the clay pebbles. I'm not touching this anymore, and let's see if it matters. I just didn't like the way they were clumping together, and I couldn't help myself. I needed to stir things up a bit. One more thing, I decided to give the seeds a mist of water from above. I was afraid they would dry out without a cover, and I wanted to make sure and keep them happy. I decided I wanted to borrow some fish tank water from my husband's tank, since there are no fish in this tank yet, and he has a beautiful tank. So I asked dear hubby to siphon off a gallon of water for me to add to my fish tank, and he did. This water has fish waste, also known as fish fertilizer, and by adding it to my tank, it will give the plants above some of the beneficial nutrients from the fish waste, at least until I get a fish. Isn't this a beautiful tank? These are cold water fish, and the plants are all alive, nothing plastic in there. So we went ahead and added the fishy fish water to the tank, and I'm sure the plants are going to love this water. This is day two, and you can see some root hairs on the wheatgrass seeds. That's the white fuzz you see here. And on the radish seeds, we can also see some tiny root hairs. Now it's day three, and you can see the sprouts starting to come up. There's still no fish in the tank yet, but there is water from a fish tank in here, and the sprouts are looking good, especially for day three. 
Here's a closer up view. They're starting to form leaves already. I wanted to see if any roots were coming out from the bottom and wow! There are lots of nice white roots coming out from the radish tray and also from the wheatgrass tray. As incredible as this sounds, it's only day four and I don't think I've ever seen microgreens come up this quickly. The fish water from Hubby's tank must have some really good stuff in it. I think it's time to get a fish. So we took a trip to Petco to see what they had and to my surprise there was an entire display of betta fish. Now I tried to find out if the correct pronunciation is betta or beta. There are people on YouTube who insist it's pronounced betta but the guy at Petco said they're all wrong and it's pronounced beta like the Greek letter beta. I don't know. But what I do know is these fish are beautiful and so many choices. But before I got carried away I saw a sign with the prices and okay some of these fish are $20 and some of these fish are $3. Big difference. The store had some gravel that I would need for the tank and we also needed some fish food. There was a dizzying array of choices on the shelf and I had no clue. So smartphone to the rescue. Once we got the gravel and the fish food, we went back to pick out our fish. We were going to go for the cheaper fish since I wasn't sure if I could do right by the fish. And remember I had a $3 coupon for a veil tail mail, so a veil tail mail is what we were looking for. Wow, I never knew there were so many beautiful males to look at. I want to take all of them home, but we're just buying one for now. We took a peek at the goldfish. Those are 20 cents each, no comparison. Here are some more nice fish we might add to the tank later, especially if the beta looks lonely, or maybe we'll get him a female companion. Okay, we are back home with our Petco goodies. Here is the male veil tail beta or beta and he is beautiful. We picked up some food. This food is specially made for bettas and they are pellets so they're easy for kids to pick up and drop through the feeding hole. And I also got a one pound bag of gravel. It's a three gallon tank so this is just the right amount of gravel for such a small tank. Before putting the gravel in the tank I gave it a good rinsing. You don't want to put anything in the tank that you haven't properly cleaned. And then it's time to put the gravel in the tank. You can see the microgreens have grown quite a bit in the last two days. It's day six now and they can already be harvested to eat. I took the top tray off the tank and spread the gravel on the bottom. Now the tank is ready for the fish. So in he goes. And then the top tray goes back on top. Take a look at those roots. And here you have a simple aquaponic system. Fish on the bottom plants on top, working together for mutual benefit. I borrowed a plant from Hubby's tank to give the better something to think about. He did look kind of bored. And I ordered a small heater for the tank. It seems they like warmer water since they're tropical fish. Meantime, this guy seems happy enough. And thanks to Amazon, the heater will be here in two days, so no worries. Today is day seven and I can't believe how quickly the radish microgreens have grown. They are definitely ready for me to eat and I'm hungry, so I snipped off a bunch. I'll let the rest keep growing. Look how beautiful this bunch looks. There are lots of ways to enjoy microgreens. One of my favorite ways is with potatoes and with a little of this. Trader Joe's everything but the elote. That adds a nice flavor to the potatoes. I'm going to harvest the rest of the microgreens and then start some herbs growing in here. Probably some dill, parsley, and maybe some basil. I hope you enjoyed this video, my first aquaponic system. Thanks for watching. Bye.